Oh. So, before I do this video, I'm going to close the door to stop my mum. Now, where was I? I know today is the debut of the brand new uh, Scooby-Doo movie called Trick or Treat Scooby-Doo. I've waited too long for this moment I get a chance to review it. I'm going to sleep. As I know that it finally came out today and I'm ready to tackle this one. So I'm not going to waste any damn time seeing it. The plot is simple. Set in Coolsville, Ohio, the mystery busting team has caught Coco Diablo, voiced by Myrna, I mean, Myrna Velasco. Yeah, I, I pronounce her name like this. Myrna, M -Y -A. hmm, how do I pronounce that name? I know, M Y R. N A V E L A S C O. Marna Velasco. Yeah, that's better. Now, where was I? In Trigger. Set in Coolsville, Ohio, the mystery busting team has caught Coco Diablo, uh, who is voiced by Marna Velasco, who is the criminal costume mastermind. But. She's off the streets in what the team has nothing to do. But a year later, they've been slowed. Their mysterious crime has been slowed to a halt by accident. And they've become restless for too long. But then, a spooky villain who goes by the name of Nefario shows up and threatens to ruin Halloween. But as they work to convince Coco to team up with them to uncover the truth... Behind this new villain, they discover the doppelgangers who just look like them. They have to work together to unmask the, the villain's master plan and save Halloween before it's too late. So let me get this straight. All I can say is it's probably a good idea to revisit the roots to uh, Scooby-Doo and the Goblin King. As I noticed, it took place in Coolsville, Ohio... And for the first time since 2008, it's very interesting that we did get to see Scooby and Shaggy being sent to a magical kingdom near Coolsville, Ohio, where we get to see goblins and fairies and all kinds of monsters. But we don't see the appearance of Spider-Man, of what I always see a goblin, and I wouldn't see Spider-Man showing up in anything I see on TV. How blatant. In for a spooky, silly holiday tale... There's something that felt off. As I know, it foreshadows the upcoming Velma cartoon by Mindy Kaling on HBO Max. Okay. But what I expected, in my expectations of seeing this cartoon, I was like, oh, I'm getting ready to see this new DVD and watch it on YouTube. But in reality, all I got to see was Coco and Velma flirting to each other. Wow. I just didn't what I got what I expected it to be. As I noticed, something felt off about its bad qualities. That the animation is the same as Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. But I'm guessing there will be two out-of-date continuities. Like, i really going to expect that. What I've learned my lesson of this movie is, like Coco... I'm guessing it's all about Halloween and Coco was mostly about a 50 year old boy named Miguel getting cursed with awesome because he ignores his grandmother's warnings to not participate Halloween when it comes to Cinco de Mayo and the, the, the Melon kids and their dog are restless and they have to convince Coco to join forces with them to stop Nefario from destroying Halloween because Nefario is basically a Halloween Grinch. A Grinch who hates Halloween. Wow. Does it sound anything familiar to that of Scary Godmother? The one from 2003, eight sequel from 2005? Hmm. Sounds very familiar. I remembered myself that the CG animation was used from Reboot, 
And it's made by Mainframe Entertainment. Who are best known for Hot Wheels Velocity. I mean Hot Wheels Highway 35 World Race. And sequel Hot Wheels Accelerator. I mean Hot Wheels Accelerators. Well we did get. It did get a sequel called. Scary Godmother the Revenge of Jimmy. Why would this stole? Wait a minute. Why the heck did Trick or Treat Scooby Doo stole this from Scary Godmother? That doesn't make sense. I know it never makes sense. That I had no idea what they're doing, despite the decent animation and its awkwardly controversial moment of "Go walk, go Brock." <laughs> That they stole this from Lion's Year. I'd give this one a 7 out of 10. No, scratch that. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. That's it. I would appreciate it to be like what I would give. Because I changed my mind. It's actually a good movie because I would give it... Wait a minute. I've already gave it an 8 out of 10. And I realized instead of giving it a 7 out of 10. I gave it an 8 out of 10. Because... It had some problematic details involving around some two girls flirting at each other who wear glasses. Very interesting. But with that out of the way, I have to scratch my back. 